Hello everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. Today I'm going to show you how I drill fork tines. So there's a few different ways. This is probably the easiest, doing it while it's still attached to the fork. But I have a big box of fork tines that were left over from other projects. So they're just singles like this. So what I'm going to show you today is what I do to get my fork tines ready for uh, bells or any other thing that you want them for, earrings that you need to drill a hole. So we're going to start with what I use. I use this uh, little punch. I've actually taken and ground down the tip to where it's really sharp. Uh, you want to have a nice sharp point on this. So this one's a little bit dull. I'm going to take my, my Dremel tool here and I'm going to hold it up like so. And I'm just going to slowly twist it as this is spinning. So we're going to do that real quick. Almost there. There we go. Nice and sharp. Because the fork tines really need to be, uh, your hole placement is very critical. Otherwise your drill might just cut out one of the sides or make it so thin that it's gonna to be too weak. So I'm gonna get you down here and I'll show you where and how I punch these. Um, I can't find my other hammer, so right now I'm just using this metal one. Um, and like I said, I've probably ground this down about 30 times over the past five years. It works great. My little punch that you just push down, it goes pink. Uh, hasn't worked as well as this, so I continually come back to this. All right, so I'm gonna get you down here, and a little bit more. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. So I like to find the center, and there's two ways the fork tines bend. Normally. They all have a bend in them. So what I do is I make sure that the side where both ends touch, that's the side I stamp. Because you can also take and lightly tap that down uh, and make it flat, but you don't have to. So the size drill bit that I'm using is a uh, 1 16th inch drill bit. Do I have one right here? That's not one. Here it is. So this is my 1 16th inch cobalt drill bit. Um, I get these for about $10 I think. For 10 on eBay. Let me just verify that real quick. Uh, seven dollars for ten uh, cobalt 16 millimeter so what I need to do is make sure that I have enough room grab the wrong one again can you guys hear the TV in the background anybody who's listening uh, so the drill bit is gonna take up that much room Get you down here. Let's take a zoom in a little bit. Come on. 
There we go. So we've got our drill bit that's going to take up that much room. You want to remember that you're also going to be trimming this up. Are you okay? Uh, you're going to be trimming this all up whenever you sand it down. So make sure you leave it a little bit more room. If you get too close, you're not going to have enough room to do that. You can hear the TV in the background. Hey Sarah, can you turn it down some more? I don't want to get copyrighted. Get my video deleted. So whenever we're doing this, we want to make sure that we have enough room here to do our um, to do our trimming after. Just gonna put it there and we're gonna give it a nice smack. You generally get one chance with these. Wrong way. Everything's backwards, Jeremy. So that's where my hole's at. Go to the next one. This one has most of the silver plate off. The other important part here is you want to make sure that you're going straight up and down. You don't want to be coming at an angle because your drill bit's going to follow that angle. So straight up and down. I'm showing you these little guys also because they get used for earrings a lot. And I have to hold on to those a different way. I have to use a tool to hold on to them. I shake really a lot. So what I do is I brace things a lot. So I'll put my pinky on here got my thumb I use my pinky to hold the piece and I'm able to take out all the shake so if you shake a lot you'll be able to do this just by having some sort of anchor point okay you see this guy is upside down that's what I was talking about you want to flip it over to where both sides are down Give a little tap. It's starting to rain. Okay, so right about there. there we go. And the easiest way to do them, if you know that you're going to be using uh i don't think there's a link for the punch um i will try and add it afterwards um yeah that's a good idea let me write that down in giant sharpie giant sharpie add hole punch All right, thank you. Yeah, I'll get that added right after I get this done. So we have our full fork here. Whenever it's like this, I like to go down the same way, the ends touching, so you get a nice flat thing. You can go here, um, but I like to go this way, and I always start with the center tine, because it's gonna drop down. next one and remember you're wanting to keep these in the middle and keep your your piece going in the direction your punch going in the direction you want the drill to go and 
this all put back where it goes. So we've got our dots here. There we go. So I'm going to move you guys to the vise because I haven't got my shop set up quite yet to the way I want it. I still have a ton of stuff in here to clean out. Um, take you off zoom. And boo, it's me. Move you right over here. Come on. Putting you guys in the vise. And I'm gonna try and get you as close in here as possible. And zoom you in. So for this part, I'm going to be using flat nose pliers, just the squared off ones. You can also use your uh, needle nose, your needle nose, or your flat pliers. So depending on if, if you're okay with putting some marks on them, this guy, I generally use this. It keeps the less, least amount of marks. All right, let's get going on here. Oh, I'm also using I'm also using beeswax as my lube. A long time ago, I got a one pound block of beeswax, and these are just pieces I chipped off of it. That one block has lasted me years, and I still have 90% of the block left. Uh, so one of those will last you a long time. I know that you can get uh, wax blocks at like Hobby Lobby or uh, Michael's. So, but that's what I use. You can also use candles, oils, all kinds of stuff, but I like the wax. It works really good. We are gonna be using a 1 16th inch bit. Um, I think those are down in the description um, from Amazon. It's one of the affiliate links um, you can also get them on eBay uh, they come in little packs of 10 and sometimes they break easy sometimes they don't this one I've had in here I've been using for about half a year <laughs> which is crazy um, but and then sometimes I'll put in one and it will just pink break the first or second hole um, so, but this one's going good and I will keep that going. So let me shrink this down and we'll start drilling some holes. Get me down there. So you can also see that I've switched. I have different holes in my piece of aluminum here. So this is the hole that I normally use. It allows me to put a piece of silverware on here and I can drill and the silverware still stays over here so I'm not sinking down into the wood or down into the hole. Because we're doing fork tines, I've got this down into a tiny hole and this goes right down into the middle of that hole. Because we're so small, of an item, we need that 
that little space so that we don't um, have to fight with the piece um, folding down into the uh, the hole. So I've got my beeswax. I'll just look behind me, make sure I got everything for you guys. Okay. We'll start up the drill. The beeswax. I like to hold my finger as close as I can without getting it too hot. Line up my mark so I've got it started. Just a nice easy pull down. Once you start feeling it not go down as fast, go ahead and wax it up. You can go a lot faster but the faster you go, the harder it is, and the hotter it gets. So on here, you can see there's a little bit of flash in here. We're gonna take that off in the next step, but we have a nice clean hole. There's flashing, it's kinda of hard to see it. For me because everything's backwards or not backwards so I'm looking at the other screen so here's one of the long ones again I'm gonna pin it down as close as I can get it to the hole see if it's turning on you. Nice good ribbon coming out. Okay, I felt it kind of pause. So I'll wax it up. There we go, we got our second one done. This is the little one. So I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm going to hold it close to the end. Normally I have some more room here. Actually I'm going to do it with my finger. I got the whole started. Keep going with this. And, and you can definitely feel it whenever it stops. So right now I feel it going through. It makes a big difference. So this one we're going to hold with the pliers. Because it's longer. And get our hole started where we want it. And by going slow, slowly, we're not getting our bits so hot that they don't want to work or that they burn out. And this one's a really soft one, so it went through really easy. So now we have our four, our fork tines, all ready to go. Make sure you guys can see that. You can stop auto focusing. Okay. Stop. Next. A 
lot of times when I hear that chipping sound, I'll make sure that I lube up my bit. A lot of times that's from going too fast. In my experience. There we go. And last one. So with this, we're going to cut off a bit, cut off the fork tines. get all of our pieces here and get back over to the bench. Let me unzoom you so you don't get sick. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oops, sorry about that. over so now we can get this fixed go back to defaults okay and here we go so now what we're left with is our fork times here So each one of these has a little piece of flashing. If your bit is dull, you'll see flashing on both sides. Let me zoom you in here. So this one doesn't have too much flashing on that side, but on the bottom, you can really see where the drill bit came through. So what we're going to do right now is use our Dremel tool. Uh, this is in the link down below, something similar. Um, it has different adjustments, but my favorite part about it is the quick change system. I go through bits sometimes so fast, I'll go through six or seven different bits doing one, one thing, especially whenever I'm sanding, going from one size, one grit, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight different grits in those spinning wheels. So we want to. I really like this handpiece. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do just take our drum here. I've got it set at about five. And I'm just going to take and barely touch the top, which is going to be the front side. And then on the back, take it down until everything's smooth. And repeat. And if it's really critical that you don't get any marks using your fingers here, you can brace and just use the very tip. To get that. So you can see I did barely even scraped up the front of that. compared to the other one really shiny all through there so that one's clean this one these sides are okay these are the four sides that aren't
So I always do a finger check just to make sure there's nothing sharp. And I'm going to go from this angle just to make sure I get any high spots. Now we're gonna cut these up. Okay, the zoom is out. I like to use my, uh, what are they, 14 inch uh, bolt cutters. And one thing I always do is I like to try and keep the side that I want to keep. I try and keep that side towards me. That way I can see exactly where my blade is going, where it's cutting. I'll take this one and just pop it off here. Go to the next one. Make sure you're leaving yourself enough material to be able to grind it down smooth so you can kind of see where I'm cutting it off there and this one will go from the other side Done with that, and what we're left with is this guy right here. If you wanted to, what you can do is take off three of the tines, leave the fourth one, and you can make tiny little elephants that would work really well. Uh, leave a little bit more legs, but something you, you can make from this piece if you wanted to use every scrap and then these will normally become bracelet pieces or other earrings if there's any design on here so nothing goes to waste we'll put that in the bin so what we're left with is a whole bunch of fork times uh, because these are going in bells no what i'll do is i'm just going to take off the sharp edges so i'm only going to do that on two and uh, we'll just use those two to make the bell or to show you the differences so i'm gonna go with this guy that one's done and we use one from the fork. I'm just taking off the corners basically and rounding it out. And because these are going in a chime, they don't, or in a bell, they don't need to be seen. Um, another trick that I've done is taking a one millimeter or a 1 16th inch diamond bit and go through it with my other Dremel tool just to make sure there's no flashing or anything inside. So we're going to put this guy back. Here's my little drawer of fork tines and things. We're going to put all of these guys in there. And where is my bell? Let me bring it up here. My bench is a disaster zone. Hmm. I have a bell in here. Refrigerator magnet. Is that a bell? 
Nope. Birdhouse. Elephants. So what? Come on, I gotta have one bell in here that I haven't made. Sorry guys, I thought I was already set for this. one of these extra pieces that I had from yesterday. So these guys were actually filled with sand and stuff. So we're going to take my leather. Because I'm not going to use these for anything else, they cracked out the sides. They broke out the sides, they've cracked and bent, and the silver's bubbled up. I'm just going to make this a little bit fatter, if I can, without breaking it. Okay. So, we'll cut this, and I'll show you how to drill the hole in the top. So I'm just going to cut this with the bandsaw real quick. Just give you a... Get you back here. Okay. <clears throat> Sarah Bansaw. Focusing. Auto focus is on. There we go. So we've got our bell here. Um, it's about an inch long. So I'm going to take and sand it down, and then we're going to. I'm just going to put a 1 16th inch size hole in the top of it. So the sander is. Over there. And if you don't have a belt sander, you can use these Dremel tools, or um, I used to clamp them in my vise and use a, a flat file for them. So I'm just gonna clean this guy up here just a little bit. Get some of that inside flashing gone. Get my outside nice and smooth. The tumbling will take care of that, but we're not going to tumble this one. This is just for you guys. Okay. Just like with the fork tines, I'm going to tap a tiny hole with a tiny tap. Try and find dead center. These handles are normally so soft that if you hit them too hard, you can split them. So let's put you back up here. Focus. Okay, I'm gonna drill this. Gotta move my thing down. That's done. Take my little pick. I like to pick inside. 
because it gets a little flashing just like we did with our fork tines we need to get that flashing out or at least a lot smaller I need this box and this box these are my my secret for tuning these things actually I have wire right there so this is stainless wire I normally use like the 20 gauge Walmart stuff uh, where's my clippers So here's what I do. I'm gonna take my round nose pliers. Get you guys down here. If you have any questions, please let me know. So I'm taking my flat nose pliers and I have a little mark. I don't know if you can see that or not. I have a little mark on my Oh, he can't. Okay. I put my pin right on that mark. It's not coming out the other side to where I can feel it. I'm just going to squeeze it down and I'm going to rotate it all the way over. That leaves me with this guy. So once I get it turned there, I'm going to take, and I'm actually going to turn it backwards a little bit to try and straighten it out okay. let's get our fork tine in there so I'm left with this hole put the fork tine in and it needs to be big enough to swivel around which is why I use that section of my round nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the end here and bump that right around. There you go, now you can see. So it's touching it. I still have full range of motion on this, which is nice. If you get it too tight, sometimes it will just get locked in place and it won't ding right. So I'm bring it down here to a little closer. All right. So let's see what this guy sounds like with no beads inside. Just running the wire down the hole. get you guys to where you can hear it not a big fan of that I don't like that so I'm going to take these guys and I normally use ones that I don't really ever use so I'm going to use these little purple guys here shoot them all over the place And generally this will take two or three of these. So I'll just start with two. Okay, so now I have two beads on here. Let's put this back inside. Sounds doing a little better. I think we can do better. 
So I'm going to grab another bead. And you can use all kinds of beads. These are just seed beads that I happen to have. I'm going to add two more. If you have really long tines, you want to make sure uh, that you're not adding too many beads because your tine will just hang way out the bottom. All right, here we go. So now we have four beads on. So we have our four beads, our fork tine. Yep, still sounding pretty good. I think what the problem might be is the tine itself. Because the material that the, the uh, fork was made from. Where's my little bags? Grab one of the small ones here. This one should be okay. This one still has some weight to it. So keeping all my beads on there, I'm just going to open this up by just turning it sideways. This guy comes right off. Put the other one, actually I need to clean that. Taking off the sharp edges. Starting with the four beads on there. This is where we're at. Let's put this through here. That sounds better. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one less bead each time I try it. And the the knife handles definitely make a huge difference in this part. So that one sounds a lot better. I still have enough fork tine coming out to where you can tell it's fork tine, but that's so much better of a sound. And the difference was one little tiny, one little tiny seed bead. That's it. And from here, what you can do is add I got a thing right here. You can add all kinds of beads or charms. Um, what do I got here? This guy on there. It's a little piece of little agate stuff. So we'll get it threaded on here. That makes the top. Whenever you do these in batches, they go really quickly, but you still have to take and tune each one, unless you get it right off the bat the first time. So I'm gonna take my curved nose pliers here, these little guys. Another trick, the wire that you made has the loop going in a certain direction. Let's see if you guys can see that. If I turn this, hopefully you can see this piece turn. So this piece down here will turn if I turn it like this, I get that sound. If I turn it like 
this. I get that sound, which I like a lot better. So that means I want my wire, when it goes through the necklace, I want the necklace to go through this way so I get that nice sound. So I bend my wire, I bend it down 90 degrees, because this is gonna go on a necklace later these little beetle on pliers, I go all the way up against the flat here. And I'm gonna flip this, let me bring it down here a little bit. It's hard to work up that high. I'm gonna flip this right around, flip my pliers over, and then I'm gonna twist it just a little bit and then pull this guy around. What that did was made my circle nice and big and straight up and down. So I'm put it back on here. I switch hands for this part. Grab my pliers, my needle nose here, and I just grab the end. I do have a measurement that I normally do that I don't have so much waste, but what I'm going to do is lift up, pull, and twist around. So the whole time I'm pulling it tight and I'm keeping it pulled up towards the front. So one, two, Overlap the other one. Get down there. Thank you. All right. So there's three. Trim this off. Sorry about that. Now I'm going to just take this. And flatten out the piece that was cut, flatten out my top piece, felt a sharp spot, we don't want that. Jingle, jingle, jingle. So there you go. That's how I drill my fork tines and how I add them and tune them to a bell. So, like I said, knife handles, they all make different sounds. If it's not making the sound that you want, try a different fork time. Sometimes that's all the difference. And adjusting. Uh, the sound with seed beads or any other little beads that you have that will fit in there. Um, the seed beads I found have been the best. But here you go. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, share with your friends. Hit the subscribe button and click the little bell. You'll get notified whenever um, I make new lives like this or whenever um, I have a video that I put out. I have a few that I'm editing right now. I think editing takes more time than the, uh, the making the video does, <laughs> which I think is why I like the lives the best. But I will see you guys later. Thank you for joining me and keep making.